Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to answer some questions from the community. I suspect there's going to be a lot of questions about my opinions around the rank reward because I've done several videos on this recently. And I think this is a point of tension for our community. So I want to address your comments and questions. Some of them I think are going to be critical of my position and what I've been saying. So I'm happy to hear that and have an open dialogue on it. But I also want to give you guys an update on my loot chests and how I'm doing with everything on all my accounts. I've got on, all, on my three main accounts, let's put it that way. On my main account, Infidel1258, I'm still in Diamond. I have the opportunity to advance to uh, Champion if I want. If I if I did, I think I would. Th my season chest would cruise up because I'm going to get more R shares every day. And there's still four and a half, five days left, so that would be profitable in some sense. Um, and I could have done this a week ago, but I didn't because I've been trying to stay in Diamond and trying to play for the leaderboard. I'm currently number forty on the leaderboard for Diamond. It's a, it's a hard thing to be on this leaderboard, so who knows if I'll finish there or not, but I'm trying for it, and it's just like a goal, and you know, I've been there before, and I'd love to be there again, so we'll see if I'm able. Um, I'm going to need to put together a win streak, and it's going to come down to the wire if I make it, because this is, last time I tried this, it's right, you know, everyone is actively fighting up until the last few minutes, so... Uh, we'll see if we make it or not, but but I'm loving this, and my re season chest rewards are a little bit lower because I missed a day or two, but as you can see, I eight chests for my daily. I'll come back in 12 hours and look at that. I'm satisfied with how this is going um, on my main account, and but as you know, I've got kind of more lucrative opportunities, or at least more plentiful opportunities with some of my alternative accounts. Six. I got seven and six, <clears throat> and they're both at they're both fighting in gold three with a hundred thousand power roughly, and they both are getting twenty plus chests a day, eighty chests on the season, seventy five on the season. We're gonna just claim. Oh, I'm five hours away. I'm gonna claim this one anyways, and we'll see what bronze is doing for me, and then I want to just answer questions. So let's do that. Hmm. These chests on average are worth about three cents each. Um, I've said before, and I need to keep saying, cause I don't want you to misread what I'm saying. I'm confident that these bronze rewards will be changed in the future. And so if you're watching this video and you're thinking, man, I should get involved just because these bronze rewards are so affordable and, um, powerful. Understand that. I don't think it's my prediction that these bronze rewards will be nerfed. And I don't think this will be consistent in months to come. Maybe for the next few weeks, this might be possible. And frankly, with $10 investment and the 3000 credits they're going to give you, you could repeat this success for one season and probably pay off your $10. Um, so that's interesting, but I don't think that's going to be a long-term sustainable because I do think they're going to ultimately say this, ha something has to change here. Uh, out of 22 chests, we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 cards, a few DC that are going to help pay for some of those rentals that I'm using to augment and increase the, the win rates. Um, very happy with this one, two, three, four, four rares and an epic. These are bronze rewards guys. And this is one, this is my daily payout. This looks like, this looks like a reward I would have got last season for champion in the, except for maybe one of these would be a chaos legion pack. This is very, very powerful. This is really, really special. And, uh, I'm happy to keep in, in doing this and trying to take advantage of these lower level rewards because I do think they're substantial. And okay, so now let's get into some of the comments. Um, I haven't pre-read these. I've although I've seen like, last night I saw one comment that was like quite detailed, and there was a lot of I guess critique and and pushback on some of the um, lower level account uh, rewards that I've been talking about here. So I'm assuming there's other content and questions around that. So I'm I'm but I haven't I haven't pre-read these. Is my is what I'm trying to say. Hey gravity, uh, hey do you post to hey do you post for the share you your battle posts? If so, where are the optimal places to post your post without being spammy? Oh, I got you. So, do I share my battle posts in certain places to get um, uh, maybe rewards? There are places, there are communities that will reward you for sharing that sort of thing or doing it like really cool battles. Uh, I don't, I don't do anything like that. And, you know, if you were to go on hive and share that stuff and put together a good uh, comment on what the battle represented or taught you or something, some sort of 
conclusion or you know meaningful thoughts on that battle you might see people upvoting you um but i would say that that is you know it's a bit there's splinter talk there's splinter talk.io there's hive um and every iteration of hive because hive has lots of extensions you can use but i don't know i don't think that's going to be deeply meaningful if that's your question i think it is and thanks for the question gravity Gage says, on, on average, one champion chest is worth 90 cents, while an average bronze chest is worth 3 cents. So one champ chest equals 30 chests, so those bronze chests. Okay. Um, if that's so, I actually don't know if the 90 cent is true. I had heard 50 cents, but okay. I'm willing to concede. Let's, let's say that's so. I agree bronze is exploitable in its current state. However, the most profitable would likely be to stay where you're competitive. In other words, you can't sustain yourself in champ in, in playing diamond. And the same with the other leagues. Yep, that that I think this sentiment is accurate regardless. I think the second sentence is accurate even if the first isn't. And I think I think the first is pretty close. I, I think 90 cents might be a bit high, but maybe I'm wrong. Um I don't see an issue. I don't see this as an issue being put forth by anyone but those in the diamond champ range. This is the sentiment I keep seeing. Um <laughs> and it seems like the implication is that people at the higher level are disappointed, frustrated, annoyed by these rewards. I think it's quite clear from my content that I am not annoyed by this, guys. And I need to keep saying this because if you think I'm if you think I'm creating videos because, oh man, I'm not getting enough rewards, then you're gonna miss the point that one, there's an opportunity for you at bronze right now, and two we need to be careful about how rewards are issued and, and understanding the sustainability of the game. Those are the two things I, I keep saying. Um, let's carry on. Maybe there shouldn't be champion chests. Maybe diamond rewards, uh, maybe make diamond rewards a bit higher than vastly increase our shares in champions. So those at the highest levels are earning enough chests to feel satisfied. That's an interesting idea. Um, uh, also motivated not to stop and stay in diamond every season. Yeah, see, that's the thing. You're right here, motivated not to stop and to stay into diamond every season. That's the interesting part of the puzzle. It's like, on the one hand, I have to tell, I have to speak to you guys about how the diamond chests don't feel commensurate for the dollar investment. I have to say that. But that sounds like, oh man, I put so much money in and now I'm not getting enough rewards. And that's not the heart of where I'm coming at. It's actually me saying, look, I'm an investor and I love this game. And I don't really care if I'm at the highest levels of the game or the lowest levels of the game. I have fun with this game. And so from an investor standpoint, I could take that. And as you say, I, I am not motivated to stay in diamond or champion for that matter. I'm motivated to play my fun game that I like to play and, and try and win rewards. And that's, that's my motivation. I love the game, but I want those rewards too. And in this moment, I feel disincentivized to stay at the highest levels. Now, that doesn't mean those rewards aren't amazing. They are, guys. They are, and, it, and I'm not complaining about that. It's just pointing out that for much less effort and much less dollar value, I could come in and I could get, I could play a bronze and have fun with the game I love and earn a lot of rewards, even if they are significantly less expensive. That doesn't matter to me because price is different than, 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 um, than value, first of all. So when you say those bronze chests are worth three cents, I agree technically today, but I don't agree long-term. I, I feel those bronze level common and rare cards. And as I just showed you, we got one Epic and I think four rares, you know, those cards that I just claimed there are, are not going to be worth three cents in the future. They're going to be worth 50 cents a dollar. And so I want more and more of those, not less and less. I want I want tons of those cards because I really strongly believe they're going to be deeply valuable because I think this game is amazing and it has a future. So from that perspective, it's like, how do I accumulate even more of these assets I love? Because I don't care that they're worth three cents right now. And simultaneously, I don't care if it's worth 90 cents right now. Like if I get a champion chest and it's worth 90 cents, you might say, wow, that's going to, on average, that's going to be 90 cents, which means some of them are going to be legendaries and some of them are going to be epics. And, and, and wow, that's really great. Sure. It's great. But, but hear me, 
I don't actually care if it's worth 90 cents or if it's worth $100 today because for the same reason, I'm not selling them today. Same as I don't care if it's 3 cents, I don't care if it's 90 cents, I don't care if it's $10 because I'm not going to sell it today. I'm holding it for the long run. And so then when you when you think about it from that perspective, you don't care if you get a car that's worth 5 or 10 or 20 bucks today because you're not I'm not going to sell it today. Maybe maybe you are, but I'm not gonna. So it doesn't matter if it's 3 cents or $10. It doesn't matter at all. Um, because I'm going to hold it for four years, maybe five years. And then when I see the next big wave of Splinterlands growth, that would be a moment when I would want to sell some of my assets. And that is, that means I want as many NFTs from this game as possible, not just certain good expensive ones now, but like a plethora. I want a portfolio that's bursting at the seams with these cards, because I think they're going to appreciate 10, 20, 50, a hundred times in certain instances. And commonly it's the, often it's the, it's the common cards that are going to have the greatest appreciation, uh, greatest appreciation because in part the, the, for, the requirement to do 400 BCX require, uh, burnt to create one highest level common card means that in the, uh, at the beginning of the launch of those cards, at the beginning of the launch of the heat Smith, there's so many BCX, right? Like, look at this. There's. 4.5 million BCX of the Heatsmith. And that is so dramatic in terms of supply that it necessitates a low individual price. But as we recognize, you know, the game going forward in the future and these cards coming out of circulation, they, and then them being printed, um, burnt to go together to up to upgrade each of those Venari Heatsmiths in your deck and mine and so on. You start losing 399 copies at a time. And that's where the total supply goes down and down and down. At the same time, we get this growth while we're getting this growth in player base. And I'm again, I'm not talking over days or weeks. I'm talking over months and years. And so from that perspective, you see the greatest amount of um, supply that goes away from the from that perspective, from the commons. And that's why you can often see the biggest price appreciation in the commons. Um, and so a lot of things in that comment. I really appreciate your tone, Gage. I can see that you, Gage, you've got, you know, you, you, you're pushing back on me and you're saying you don't think it's a big deal that it's exploitable. You agree it's exploitable in its current state. However, the most profitable opportunities are, are wherever you're competitive. That I believe is true. Profitable from the, from the dollar sense, but from the long-term perspective and from the cost to get to where you're at, like if you're playing at gold, you probably have four thousand dollars worth of cards. Now, if you're playing, if you, if, in order to succeed doing what I'm doing with bronze, you really would just need a ten dollar account and the three thousand credits they're going to give you, and then you're going to within two hours, as demonstrated by some other cryptocurrency or Splinterlands uh, YouTubers, within two hours you can get dozens and dozens of rewards. And so, it's not so much just are the rewards better where you belong; they are. And it's not even so much, <clears throat> or is that kind of maximally efficient? It's it, it at the end of the day, it's like for a dollar cost investment, how do I get the ex the maximum reward for the least contribution? Because that's the business question. And earlier we talked about how much I like it and I, I want to have fun with it, but I can have fun with it while playing in that realm of how, um, stretching my dollar as far as possible and me as a human i'm not going to run bots so me as a human i probably can only do two accounts at bronze per season but i think i can do two accounts at bronze per season and simultaneously run my main account that's what i've been doing this season i'm having fun with it i'm, I'm playing more than i have in years guys i love it but the question is when 200,000 bots come back because that's 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 what we're looking at guys we're 200 explore explorer dashboard we got 150 160,000 players yesterday we used to have 350 we got 200,000 accounts that are silent right now when those bots return and they get two three four hundred loot chests a season for playing in bronze and and doing so for free we have an inflation problem and so that's where the it's not an exploit in your hands it's not an exploit in my hands for me to do two accounts doesn't even move the needle. 
But when someone comes in with 10,000 bots and they're able to take advantage of these, these amazing bronze rewards, that's where an opportunity becomes an exploit. So thank you for the comment. And I can tell you kind of disagree with some of my feedback on that, but also you, 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 uh, you articulated your position very clearly. I agree with much of what you say. Um, I just, I guess, want to nuance out, um, some disagreement and I hope I did that well. So Gage, thanks for the comment, dude. Crypto Chad, I'm sick of the game makers making the game better for themselves and make, and their friends who do bots who already have all the cards. Yeah, see, this is part of my concern, guys. Like, I can tell there's, there's an, there's a frustration in this moment, and there's a lot of excitement, excitement too. I think there's more excitement than frustration. There is in my heart, and I think there is in our community. I've seen the subscribers growing. I've also seen, like I said, I'm, I'm playing the game more than ever. I'm hearing a lot of excitement from all the creators to the YouTube creators, so that's awesome. But then you see a comment like this, and it's like they feel there, they, there are, there's a proportion of our of people in this space that look at this change as being a step back. I disagree. I think it's two steps forward and one to the side. And so I think it's a huge improvement. This whole rank reward system, I think it's a gigantic improvement, but I actually think there was a stumble in, in the middle of it. And that was around the focuses and, and how limited that made the play feel. Because now, right now, you, if, you, if you have to play a focus to win daily chests, that means you have to concentrate on one splinter. They're gonna change that though. It's easy to fix. They're gonna add more focuses and that'll solve that one problem. But that's a big problem because it takes away the fun from some of the variability and the counterplay that can happen in this game. So focuses, being limited is very problematic but they're going to fix that and they can fix it easily so that's one big problem and the second big problem is you know the opportunity to gain a lot of chests even if you say the chests are worth three cents if i tell you i'm going to get 400 of them a season and i do think that's possible 20 a day let me show you guys so we're talking 20 chests oops 20 chests a day times 15 days in a season that's 300 Plus, I believe I can get 150 for the for the season. That's 450 chests. Call it just for just to make it like that's quite, that'd be maybe that's maximized. Call it 400 chests a season, and times them by 0.3 cents. That's 12 US dollars for each bronze account that that you do that on. And I'm doing that on two accounts as a human. Army bot armies can do that for free. You're talking 12 US dollars profit per season if you if you start a new account for a ten for a ten dollar account. If, if if developers can code and scale up using this, you're gonna see a massive, massive uptick in the accounts being sold and it'll be bot armies. Do we want that? I think the answer is you don't. And so I get what Chad is, you know, the frustration is, he, well, he's pointing fingers at the developers. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's the developers that they love the bots, that they, that the quote unquote friends with those people who run bots. I don't believe that. Well, I don't, if it's true, I don't know that to be true. Um, but the animosity there around, around how this reward structure is, how the wheels are meeting the road. You know what I mean? how it's actually what is the implications of what are actually happening here there is some frustration in it and i i get it because there are implications where we've complained for months about bots in this game and don't you think this is going to drive more of them in the meantime i'm going to use take advantage of it and i recommend you do too but recognize that i don't think splinterlands is for the bots i think they are for anyone using this game so long as they are not being able to exploit it. And I think this will be exploited if it's left unchanged by bots. So thanks for the comment, Chad. <clears throat> I'm extremely unhappy with the new system. I don't want to have to play all the time every day just to get my rewards. I work just about all the time and it's hard enough to find time to play as it is. I guess I'm just an investor now. I'll sell at the peak when I'm, but I'm done playing. The bots are still making a killing, uh, the ones that have cards. Yeah, um, 
this part I agree with. The bots that are they're still playing are making a killing. I guess I'm an investor now. I mean, it's just you're, you're like you're feeling deeply frustrated. I hear you. Um, I do agree. It requires a lot more play. I would say from the perspective of 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 how much more play you're required to commit. You could do what I'm doing and, and try and run a, a create a new account, an alt account, and then start when it starts out in Obvious, you're going to find that you don't need to play nearly as much in order to achieve really um, your dailies and your seasons. Uh, and 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 maybe that's going to feel more satisfying. And then next season, your main account is going to fall down a level because that's just how it works. And then maybe you're going to feel more comfortable at that level, too. Um, you know, I don't know if that's helpful, Chad, but if it is, uh, I mean, hopefully it is. Thanks for the comment, dude. James Bell, bronze is crap. Re bronze is crap reward. Diamond chest all day long, dude. Boring doing what you are doing. If you like the game, you would be playing in diamond or higher. If you like the game, guys, like, do you hear this? If you like the game, I've been here for four years, James. I've been playing this game every day for four years. Who are like, how long you been here? So this is the thing, like the the idea that what I'm sharing is somehow indicative of, of a, a dislike of the game or that um, that if I really understood the game better, I would chase after what he perceives as the only real significant option. Uh, you know, if that's if that's what you want to do, James, go for it. I see an opportunity and I'm having fun with it. And so I'm going to, I'm going to continue to chase after that better reward, tenfold rewards and uh, a penny dude, uh, better reward, tenfold rewards, a penny. Okay. For new players to come and stay. Looks like you're in it for the money and not the game itself. Dude, no disrespect you where you belong. You're not a noob in this game. See, does this mean James like does it mean that because I've been here for a long time I, I'm not allowed to create an alternative account and go have fun in a bronze league I mean and in fact it's not a bronze league I'm I, my this account is playing in gold so I am earning bronze chests but I am fighting in gold and why why can't I do that these are assets I bought with the card and I'm this is my time and I created a ten dollar account just like anybody else could like why what would be the problem how are you criticizing this and by the way like i pointed out at the beginning of the video i am still playing my main account and i'm achieving great rewards i'm going to get just as many rewards probably i'm going to get more rewards or just as many as i would have if i stayed in diamond last season as i will now staying in diamond so plus these chests are better so i don't know i mean i i get the feeling comments like this are actually upset that i am that I am pointing out a problem in the reward system. And maybe James feels, man, don't rock the boat. Maybe he feels, Dwayne, stop calling attention to this and, and let new players have that opportunity. Because he even says like, okay, for new players to come and stay, but you know, but not for me because I'm not a noob. So is the implication that these rewards are great and they're perfect and they're without flaw, but Dwayne, you shouldn't be allowed to play in it because you're a champion player, a diamond player. Um, and I think that's crazy because are you, I'm a public person who plays this game openly and I tell you what I'm doing, but you think for a second that I'm the only one that's trying this. So I'm, I'm actively telling you guys about an opportunity in front of you, James, and I'm speaking to you because this is something maybe you could benefit from. And I want to actually, as a viewer of my channel, I want to equip you with the techniques and strategies that might allow you to stretch your dollar and invest wisely and maximize your returns for your time and attention. If you don't want to hear that, I mean, I, sorry. I mean, I'm trying to help you. Um, and I'm going to be, I, I am going to do it because I do love the game. And when you talk about how it's not fun or it's boring to do that, I totally disagree. I'm having a lot of fun. You know, it isn't the only thing I'm doing all day. And what, what I'll tell you, what isn't necessarily always fun is when you come in and you're playing a diamond, like I said earlier, I'm playing my main account at diamond and it's a grind, dude. It's a real challenge. 
So let's infidel win win win. There's three wins in a row. Loss win win loss 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 win loss loss win loss. Like it's probably 50 50 or maybe I'm like slightly better than 50 50. Man, it's tough. It's really really tough. It's it's exhausting sometimes. It's it's like playing at the highest level I'm possibly capable of running and and trying to win the leaderboard is very difficult. And so then sometimes I just want to go over here and I want to throw in the bronze and I want to like just I want to just experience the fun game and I want to win and feel like oh, okay like get that get that endorphin rush of winning and the serotonin from like un unlocking some of these packs. I don't see that as being uh, boring at all. Hmm. And I think the only real reason anyone could criticize the content I'm 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 sharing around this would be if you just are upset that I'm drawing attention to it. That's that's how honestly how I feel. And so I'm I'm confused and I and I'm inviting you to recognize that I, this is an opportunity for everyone, whether you're at the highest levels or brand new, and that if we think this is the, me advertising this is problematic, then I think what we really are saying is the reward system is problematic. And that's on the developers to revamp if, if they if they agree. Jack says, then what happens next season? You can't claim bronze rewards uh, next season anymore, right? Since you're in gold now. Next season, he says, uh, gold is best while playing in diamond. Um, no, no, uh, Jack, next season, I can create two new accounts and I can send these cards to that account. And so, like I said, even if you're buying a $10 account and you're getting $12 out of it from the, from the, the returns from playing this, this repeats itself. And you could do this as many times as you wanted, as long as you had a desire and a knowledge of how to rent the market. And so, no, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to end at all. As long as the, if the developers continue to allow this, you could have one bot there or one alted account that you play, you start a novice and go to gold. And then another alt account that starts in, um, that you don't play yet. <clears throat> and, and when this one plays, um, this one rests when this one plays this one rests and so you can alternate back and forth it's absolutely replicable and so guys if you're concerned about this approach speak to the developers talk to town hall and raise this as a concern and because i do think it's a concern i do think i'm the one who's been advocating for like like here ever since this rank reward problems this is this is like seven days ago or something like that eight days ago when i was first getting my my bearings on how the rank reward system was operating <clears throat> in that video a 24 minute video I, I talk about how this is a problem and it's this is uh oops Back. yeah i talk about how it's a problem and how it's i think i probably talk about how it's not sustainable and 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 then in that context recognizing the opportunity that it represented i started to move into trying my own hand with the bronze thing and so this if you if you're reading these videos as you know a call to take advantage of the system forever no it's an it's a it's a it's a red flag to developers that I don't think this is sustainable. And it's a comment that while it's here, all who are paying attention should, should use it. One guy says bronze meta gaming for the win. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You run the meta, you run the meta uh, play and it absolutely rolls. The bronze level is far more, far less challenging. It's easy mode and you know, you say what you want about, maybe you don't, maybe you sometimes you want to focus, like the, James was saying, you sometimes you want to play your, your your best, your favorite video game on the highest difficulty. Other times you, you want to turn it on easy and just cruise through. That's what the difference here is. And I'm enjoying it. Bobby says, nice. Appreciate you, cuz. Appreciate you too, dude. Uh, let's see. Same, was talking to my daughter's mom about how i was planning on upgrading my mylor and i could tell she turned she tuned out the second <laughs> by the second sentence i kept talking anyway <laughs> in that video i was saying like this community is where i talk about splinterlands and in the real world there are people who will entertain the conversation for a period of time and i appreciate that 
but it isn't it isn't their interest and in whether it's blockchain or whether it's nfts or something they just the eyes gloss over and they don't want to hear it. but here on here on youtube we have a community of people six thousand strong that are happy to talk about it and lovingly debate like there's a push and shove here isn't there you guys some of you feel strongly that what i'm doing with bronze is not fair or appropriate for me for some reason but it's fair and appropriate for others well i want to challenge you on that and say if it's fair and appropriate for anybody it's fair and appropriate for everybody who plays the game and i actually think it's 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 leading us to a place where we're going to see significant inflation which is a bad thing we're going to burn through some of the reward cards which maybe is a good thing so there's like give and take pro and con and i just want to i want to discuss the nuance through the the series that i'm that i'm doing bobby says i don't think we need ecr potions instead i think we should be better to drop ecr when you lose also maybe slightly increase the ecr loss upon a loss but no ecr drop when you win hmm interesting so if you lost ecr when you lost that would reward talent and probably incentivize human play because bots are never going to be winning 20, 30 f games in a, you know, they're not going to win 100% of their games. Bots are more likely to win 50, 60% of their games. That's interesting. I could see that working. Unless bots get to a place where they're so sophisticated that they just, they, they have amazing win rates. Because mm. the issue always with this game is understanding the opportunity... The investment cost and what sort of opportunity is possible in that and comparing that to how easily automation can exploit that formula of investment to opportunity thanks man i'm bali always positive the way you think amazing bro how cool are you thank you my dude 25 chests and three wins was pretty wild i was very surprised by that Bobby says, are you aware you can play magic in melee only? I only found out last night. You can only do magic in melee only if the melee only monster has magic. So there are certain, like, let's go over here. Under cards, rule set, oops, rule set. So melee only, watch this. on here melee mayhem so in melee mayhem um do i do this gameplay abilities yes no i don't think there's an easy way for me to show it i thought it was going to show me all the monsters that would be eligible but no that's under abilities and then you would want um let me show you one because I know one off the top of my head. There's two, actually. Void armor. Here we go. So look at this. In void armor, there is the... There he is. Oaken Behemoth has both melee and magic. And as a result of that, this card is playable in melee only. And it's simultaneously playable in... Um, the rule set that requires... That says no melee... Uh, are playable i'm pretty sure about that second part what's the rule set gameplay it's like silence magic or something weak magic no this one lost magic I'm pretty sure within Lost Magic, you can still play that monster I just showed you because it has a melee focus and therefore it slips in. And that will happen also with archery when archery, there are contexts where it's melee only, but you can play a, a monster that has both melee and archery. And there are some neutral monsters that have that. And there's, a, um, there's probably three or four, there's three cards I'm thinking of, four cards I'm thinking of that have a combination of melee and archery or melee and, and, um, and magic. And so you can think that's an opportunity to utilize in certain contexts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Appreciate that, Bobby. Um, 6 a.m. First I click, then I clock in. I love it, man. Thanks. 
Uh, Hans Herman says, in my opinion, the win rates of a couple summoners are sometimes so high because they have a low sample size in the right situations. Example, the Flying Dragon Summoner has such a high win rate because she only gets used during Earthquake. Ooh, that's very smart. So Hans, I agree for, I agree. Now what he's talking about is we're, I use Summoner Lab to come over here and look at the summoner data and decide at whatever level that I'm playing at. If you play silver, you can come in and you can see what win rates each of the summoners has. And these, this data is rolling on a two week basis, which means it's not entirely comprehensive, which also means that you're going to find that sometimes there's a very low sample size. This is actually a good sample size, 726 wins or sorry, battles. And of those 62% of this time, the Daria Dragon Scale wins. That's actually a really strong uh, win rate, very strong. Um, and at Silver, like look at this, it's only beaten by Prince Rin. Like look at, I'm surprised this one beats it. Um, Selenia and so on. But like to his point, Prince Julian has a 100% win rate. I bet, I bet it's been played twice. Look at that, two battles. So it's, one guy in the world owns the card and so the number when he plays it he plays it in the exact right context where the you know there's 12 mana matches and um and he's able to just really position something in certain ways to maximize his opportunity he, but it only happens twice and it's a six thousand dollar card so you're right about you know the data is sometimes skewed by the low play rates like this one too 72 battles for talia firestorm um as opposed to Talia has a better win rate than Yoden. Are you kidding me? But Yoden plays 900 matches. So this is, he's right that win rates are a product of the number of games played in part. And, and so that's totally true, but you do your best with the data. You, you try, you need to try and read the smoke signal. So if I tell you that uh, at, at gold, um, the highest win rate card is kitty. And the second is bright and bloom. You, you better take a second and say, okay, I'm going to rent a Dragon Summoner today. Um, how much would Kitty cost to rent? How much would Bright and Bloom cost to rent? And then also dive deeper into how many battles did each play? What are they good with? How expensive might those cards be to rent if I need to rent them? And Bright and Bloom, he only paid 52 battles. Well, still, that's quite a few. Um, and I would argue Bright and Bloom is quite powerful in one context because it the flight adds a 25% chance to dodge. So I think that's partly why Bright and Bloom wins. So, but that's a bit of a disc that's now I'm debating, you know, why Bright and Bloom wins. I just wanted to talk to your question around um, how win rates are decided and then thinking through the data on that, because you should be making these choices for yourself when you're deciding which cards you want to buy or rent. You come through and you look at data, but then try to Go a step deeper don't just trust the number ask more questions what is it playing with what is it winning with um what is it losing against what rule sets is it playing within and so on that's 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 a great analytical mindset good for you dude and that's that's gonna serve you well that that sort of thinking that you, that you brought there I can't remember what battle that was. Oh yeah, there was yeah there was a there was a I think I won three games and lost one game. And in the three I won, I got twenty five daily chests. And there was a repeated miss on one of them. I forget which one it, what it looked like though. Okay, we're starting to get out of the content where it's um, pushing back on me. I really wanted to give you guys a voice in this moment where you might feel for the last. In fact, you should feel for the last week. I've been heavily covering this bronze content and the reward opportunities at the lowest level. And in some sense, I suspect a few of you feel I'm beating a dead horse and you feel like I just continue to talk about this stuff and I, I should focus on other things and I'm a diamond player and why am I even messing, messing around or you know complaining about this? But guys, it's so important because it speaks to one, an opportunity in front of you. Like this right now is amazing and you should take advantage of it if you can, because it won't last forever. I'm confident. I am perfectly confident. Aggie and Yabba will nerf this because I, I believe I understand where their mindset is around incentivizing low level accounts. And I believe they're unanimous in the opinion that it is not okay to deeply incentivize bronze level accounts, which cost $10 to run. I suspect they get rid of the 3000 credits. I suspect they change how, how much cards are dropping in those things. I suspect 
a ton of different considerations are running through their mind right now. And I, I, I urge you to watch the next town hall from Splinterlands because I suspect this will be a point of conversation either in how it's said or what is specifically not said. This is so important because this is a financial opportunity. And remember what I said at the beginning of this video, these are three cent cards today. They are dollars later. And in three or four years, if I, if I told you over the next two weeks, you could get 200 cards that are worth, that are going to be worth a hundred, a dollar each in four years, you could get them just by playing a game for fun. That's what I'm talking about. I'm saying in the next two, every season, as long as they allow this at bronze for $10, you can have an account that's going to probably generate 150 cards and maybe they're worth three cents each now, but in four years, I bet they're worth a dollar each. And so we're talking 150 bucks, maybe a hundred dollars a week for the rest of, you know, every week until they change the system. This is deeply valuable because the price today is irrelevant and the price long term is deeply meaningful due to the value intrinsic to these NFT. So I have to keep addressing this. I have to keep sharing it. I have to keep raising this question and concern because one, while this opportunity exists, I want you to have the opportunity to extract rewards for it. And two, I want people who are listening from the developer standpoint to recognize that this is this is great. This is a massive amount of inflation. This is problematic from, I think, for the long term. I don't believe this is sustainable in the long term. I think something's got to change. So that's why it's so acutely needed now. And um, I thank you for your viewership through it and your comments on it. And like I said, I really wanted to give you guys space to push back on me because I know some of you think, why are you talking about this? Why are you doing that? Just playing diamond and be quiet kind of thing is, is the tone of some of those comments. And I strongly disagree because this is a unique opportunity and I want you to know about it and I want to take advantage of it too. So guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you as always for your time and attention. If you want to hang out with my live events where Bobby is just viewing one of them, um, come join the YouTube membership and find the community tab on my YouTube page and um, consider joining or subscribing at whatever tier you see fit. Every Thursday night, we hang out for an hour or more and we cover whatever topics the, the team wants to, the 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 squad wants to hang and, and address. And then tonight, Friday night, uh, June 10th, we have a live event on Splinterlands TV and we'll talk more about whatever comes up from the community. So come hang out. That one's free. It's free for everybody. It's on Splinterlands TV from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have an amazing day. God bless.